we believe high intensity interval training is the best way to condition for maximum conditioning, health, and fat loss. So the body really pulls energy from a pool of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Now those are big words. You don't really need to understand exactly what it means, but it's adenosine triphosphates, three phosphates. And really energy is produced when adenosine triphosphate gives off a phosphate and becomes adenosine diphosphate. And there are several ways it can do that. Now, right now, as you're watching this video, you're just watching a video, so your breathing is low. So all of that energy production into that pool or reservoir of energy is performed by the aerobic energy system or by oxidation. Like the air you breathe is literally oxidizing fatty acids and providing enough energy for you to just sit and watch a video or to sleep or to have a conversation or anything that is very low in intensity, but long in duration. So how long does the aerobic energy system work? Forever, because when you stop breathing, you're dead. But what happens if at this very minute while watching this video, you are attacked by a tiger? You get up and you run as fast as you can from the tiger. Immediately, your breathing is going to kick up because your body has more energy needs. It's making heavy withdrawals out of that pool or out of that reservoir of energy, and it begins to run out of energy. This is because that aerobic energy system provides us with a little bit of energy for a long time, but not a lot of energy. So if I need a lot of energy, where does it come from? Well, the first process is we have maybe six, seven, eight, nine seconds of stored ATP in this reservoir. So as soon as I kick up the intensity, I've got a few seconds, probably 10 or less, of energy ready to be used. And immediately as that gets used and it breaks off a phosphate, the fastest way to replenish that energy is creatine phosphate comes around and says, hey man, hey adenosine diphosphate, you can have my phosphate and you can go back to becoming adenosine triphosphate. So it resynthesizes that phosphate, we get energy, and we're good. And that'll give us an additional few seconds of energy. This process is always occurring, but eventually that runs out too. And now I have to get energy from a third energy system, another anaerobic energy system. And by the way, anaerobic is not a great word because it means without oxygen and oxygen is always present. I'm always breathing. Oxidation is always occurring. But what it's really saying is that to perform these anaerobic systems, I don't have to bring in oxygen from the outside to perform that. And that process is called glycolysis. And really, this is the system where the body burns carbohydrates or sugars as fuel, that glycolysis. It sounds like glycogen. It's literally glycogen breakdown in the muscle cell in order to provide heavy amounts of energy to the body, but it can't do it very long because there is a buildup of fatigue, potential waste products like lactate, not lactic acid, but lactate, hydrogen ions. The truth is we're not entirely sure why Usain Bolt can run a 100 meter sprint in 9.6 seconds, but he can't keep up the same speed for a 200 meter sprint or a 400 meter sprint. So we know that when we need high intensity or lots of energy withdrawals, we are utilizing that glycolytic system. But here's the case. When we do high intensity training, we are actually really maximizing all three energy systems. We don't stop breathing heavy when we're running really hard from the, from the rabid tiger. We don't stop utilizing creatine phosphate when we have those high intensity needs. And certainly we're using that glycolysis. So high intensity conditioning, high intensity, will actually make all three energy systems more efficient. But this is not a two way street. If you just perform low intensity, long duration aerobic exercise. That aerobic exercise can make your oxidative capacity better or make your VO2 max go up, but it will not make your glycolytic or even your CP, your creatine phosphate system more efficient. So really only one way to train makes all three of those efficient and that's what we wanna do. So how do I do that practically? Well, what I'm gonna do and what we have our clients do is high intensity interval training or what we call HIT. What are the most important things that I keep in mind for HIT, knowing that most people that are watching this video channel 
understand that we believe strength is the most important thing to build first. So I need to be able to condition in a way that doesn't really rob me of strength. So I'm gonna perform high intensity intervals with low impact and low skill exercises. So things like pushing a prowler or sled, riding an exercise bike, sprinting on an exercise bike, like a rogue echo bike or an assault bike, maybe rowing on a C2 concept two rower machine. Those all work much better than say running down the street because running down the street is very high impact. And I believe this is really where CrossFit gets it wrong from a, from a conditioning standpoint, that while they metabolically condition well, they often use high impact, high skill exercises, like using things like the snatch or the clean and jerk to perform their exercises or sprinting out in the street, which is very high impact and probably okay if you're 23 years old, but not if you are a 42 year old soccer mom or dad. So what we want to do is we want to pick exercises that are low skill and low impact. And we want to perform those for about 15 or 20 seconds, somewhere in that ballpark, as hard as we can possibly go. We're going to ramp up our heart rate as high as we can. And then we're going to rest until we have nearly complete recoveries. And then we're going to go again. So in the beginning, if you start that for 15 or 20 seconds of work, you're probably gonna rest two minutes or so somewhere in that ballpark. As you get more efficient at this type of conditioning, you will eventually be able to work into a one to three work to rest ratio. So if I work for 30 seconds, I would rest for 90 seconds. If I work for 15 seconds, I would rest for 45 seconds. That's a pretty good ratio to have, or at least to, to fight for, to be able to be in maximum condition shape. Now here's the question, why do I wanna do this? Well, number one, for heart health, we know that for sedentary people, lifting heavy compound movements will increase their health, it will lower their morbidity just by lifting heavy weights. Will it be enough long-term? Maybe, but if you wanna get an additional health benefit, you really just have to do a little bit more if you're training three or four times a week with heavy weights. And it might just be something simple as a brisk walk for 10 minutes every day or three days a week or four days a week, something that gets your heart rate up enough to allow some amount of additional health increase. If I wanna condition for performance because I'm trying to make those energy systems as efficient as I possibly can, then I can do that as well, but I would probably do those high intensity interval sessions just two or three times a week and making sure that they're always low impact, low skill, and after weight training, not before. And the last one is really with fat loss. The number one thing we can do for fat loss is, is eating correctly. So we have to be at an energy deficit or a calorie deficit to lose additional fat and have fat loss. But if I wanna keep my metabolism stoked, the nice thing about high intensity interval training where I do those short bursts of work and a little bit longer bursts of rest and I do that for just five or seven or nine rounds, so you're talking about maybe 10 to 12 minutes of conditioning, it will increase my basal metabolic rate for the next 24 hours or so. So my, I will actually burn more energy or more fat or more calories over the next 24 hours after performing that style of training than if I had just walked on a treadmill for an hour. So this is why we believe high intensity interval training, maximizing the aerobic oxidative system, the creatine phosphate ATP system, and the glycolytic system is the best way to condition for maximum conditioning, health, and fat loss. For more information about fat loss, nutrition, conditioning, click the nutrition playlist right up there. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to our winter wellness series and we're back with more health tips from Dr. Zach for staying well this winter. And now we're gonna get into fitness. So we're gonna talk about that. And a lot of people during the holidays and winter season tend to stay inside or maybe are less active, which right this time of the year, sometimes we wanna hibernate and relax, but we also need to maintain our fitness to be staying well, to keep our immune system healthy and to be feeling good. So I know you have an amazing hack for maintaining fitness during the winter season as well as year round. So why don't you share your uh, your best fitness tip with us and then how we can kind of implement it. Awesome. 
Four minute workout has been an interesting phenomenon. It's kind of gone worldwide. It's the one thing that when I show up to lecture somewhere internationally or nationally, somebody always walks up before me before my talk now you know, while I'm putting my mic on or something like that and is like, do we get to do the four minute workout all together? <laughs> um, because people really, A, enjoy the workout for themselves, but it's one of the funnest things to do with other people because it looks mm -hmm. ridiculous on some level, which is a good just kind of disarming thing. That Why don't we move together as a public more mm -hmm. often? Yeah. And so it's a good kind of community builder. And it's a fun thing to do with the whole family sitting around Christmas afternoon. You haven't moved and everybody's feeling lethargic and everything else. Get the kids up. Everybody move a little bit. Get your groove on and really uh, bring an incredible health. So what is the four-minute workout? The four-minute workout I designed uh, about almost eight years ago now, I guess it was, but uh, a bunch of science had come out around this thing called nitric oxide. And uh, the, the guy who discovered nitric oxide in 1992 would go on to win the Nobel Prize for that discovery. So a very important molecule for human health. It turns out that it's really the only molecule that we make uh, in the human cells that would go into concert in, with this communication network that we call the redox chemistry. And if you know anything about the restore stuff we make, that's the, that's the redox kind of family made by the bacteria and fungi, and there's literally hundreds of millions of versions of that one made by the biome, whereas in the human side, we can just make this one tiny little nitrogen-based uh, molecule that's, that's good at doing this communication thing. And so it's the way in which you're gonna participate with the microbiome to create a healthy human body. And so the nitric oxide is made primarily in the lining of your blood vessels, and it's made and stored there until you run out of oxygen somewhere. And interestingly, that's the one thing we typically don't do in a week. Even if we go to the gym and we work out, we tend to work out without exhausting the oxygen level completely in the muscle. Mm. And so you need that anaerobic state in the muscle before you'll release the nitric oxide. So I designed this four minute workout. With that in mind, I need to move the muscle to the point of lack, lack of oxygen so it'll release the nitric oxide. And I wanna do it body wide, which is another thing we don't do. We go to the gym, we work mm -hmm. out arms one day, or we do our legs one day. We're told to like cycle these muscle groups. And so even at the gym, best case scenario, you've released nitric oxide from your biceps, your triceps, maybe your deltoids or something like that. And then you wait, and it's a whole nother week before you get back to that muscle group. Mm -hmm. With a four minute workout, three times a day, you're gonna relieve the, the nitric oxide reservoir from 16 of your largest muscle groups in your body. 21 times a week, you're suddenly getting this, this stimulation. So what's the effect on biology? Nitric oxide, it turns out, is a huge mechanism for delivering oxygen. It's gonna dilate all the blood vessels and get the oxygen and nutrients that you need to build muscle, maintain lean muscle, and really rev up the metabolism as a whole. Inspire the liver to let go of fat, inspire the peripheral uh, fat cells to start to, to release their hold on the storage of fat uh, molecules so that they can be utilized effectively by the rest of the body. So uh, fuel usage is a huge one. Huge role in the immune system that's just starting to emerge. And so nitric oxide, and we know, is gonna play an important role. And this time of year, while the upper respiratory infections are going crazy and everything else, this is your role of, uh, of really participating in strengthening the immune system through movement. Of course, when you do the four minute workout, not only is your, is your muscle breathing that oxygen in, you're breathing oxygen. So it's gonna raise your heart rate, it's gonna raise your respiratory rate, you're gonna open up the lungs, especially with the big movement over the head. No, none of our actions in the day require this, right? Everything is down here now. We're on mm -hmm. countertops, we're on computers, we're not lifting up over top of the head. And so suddenly a four minute workout, you've got 12 minutes a day where you're getting full range of motion into your chest, into your shoulders, open up the lung. Most of us are just sipping air off the tops of our lungs and we never open up the base of our lung and that's of course where the pneumonia will hit. Mm -hmm. So you get pneumonia in the winter time is because you had collapsed airways in the lower respiratory system and you had a poor representation of microbiome into that environment. So pop open the bottom of the lungs, push the chest out, get the arms up over the head and feel that opening that, that's gonna happen. And what time of year could be better for opening your heart chakra than <laughs> Christmas and the holidays that you might be celebrating. And so open up your chest, be vulnerable to those you love and move with them. And so very, very exciting stuff to come out of that four minute workout for you. Mm, I love it. And there's no excuse, it's four minutes, right? We all have four minutes, can squeeze that in a few times a day and it does feel so good. We do it here at the headquarters and it is yeah. so fun to do it as a group too, to bring community together. And a great thing to do with your family and friends to get moving after that big holiday meal. Thanks, Dr. Zach, and we will link to the exact um, the routine so you can check that out and do it yourself. And if you want to learn more from Dr. Zach, go to intrinsichealthseries.com. Thanks for watching.
Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. This is going to be the four minute workout we're taking you through today. We're excited to show you this new concept of exercise that's come out of the science around nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is this little magical communication molecule made by the human body, stored in the blood vessels that feed your muscles. When you start to exercise and you run out of oxygen, you release that nitric oxide. It goes downstream, opens up blood vessels, increases oxygen and nutrient delivery to that muscle to increase the opportunity for muscle build. The cool thing is you rebuild that nitric oxide every couple hours. And so we have the opportunity to release this three times a day and get that additive benefit of again and again hitting the muscle body with it's time to grow, time to feed, time to breathe. And so we're going to take you through this today. The goal is three set, sets when you're doing this four minute workout. Start with 10 repetitions, work yourself towards 20. No hand weights necessary to get this activation going. If you want to build that over time, you're welcome to. But right now we're going to focus on form and speed to run out of the oxygen at the joints at those big muscle groups. We're going to work with the 16 biggest muscle groups and you're going to go after it. So enjoy this, integrate it into your day, and go after a new level of exercise and fitness for you. Thanks for joining us. So here we go. We're going to take this through and we're going to go through three sets of this. But I want to take you through slowly the first uh, set here and the actions that you're going to be doing. Your form is important. Uh, more important that you do the form right and get your pace built up over time, certainly than using weights or anything else like that. So let's focus on the form. A good squat is your butt going back like it's going to go sit in a chair. It's not just a simple knee bend. You're really going back, which means your arms have to come out to balance you as your weight shifts backwards. So a good squat coming back like this. And then you're going to come up. If it's uncomfortable in your knees or your back, you just go more shallow. And that shallow motion is going to be fine for you. You're going to get the same activation of the quadriceps. The goal is to keep that muscle engaged. And so the speed is really more important than the depth of your squat. Okay? And then we're going to go to the arms. And the arms are just a simple 90 degree arm swing to start. And that 90 degrees is going to take you through a number of muscles up in the deltoids, in the back, in the shoulder. And so that 90 degree swing, it's more important that you again kind of do that tight form rather than just kind of flapping your arms like this. It's not going to give you the same muscle control. So 90 degrees, stop it at the end points. Then you're going to come up and do the big circle. You're going to click at the front, click at the top. Don't get lazy and just do this. You really want that full motion where you're getting the whole rotation of the shoulder in there. So click at the front, click at the top, get through that motion. The third exercise in the upper extremities is simple. It's just straight up over the head. I want to show you a quick modification of the second one in case you have shoulder problems. If it is too painful for you to do this motion here, whether you have a rotator cuff tear, or a little bit of a frozen shoulder, you're going to really focus in on this motion here instead with uh, the opposite direction. So if your shoulders are hurting, come to the center, reach up the center and over the top, and then break the arms apart. And so it's almost like you're doing the breaststroke through the water or something like that. And it's amazing, even if you have frozen shoulder, how that can break things loose and open it up. If you don't have any shoulder problems, you're going to get more muscle activation in this direction. So that'll be that second set. And then again, you're going to finish with that military press straight over the head. All right. And so let's go ahead and go through a quick set. We're going to start with the squats. Check your position of your feet. They should be parallel, toes pointing forward, heels behind those. Your feet should be about shoulder width apart. And so let's go ahead and knock out that set. We're going to keep the quads engaged. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you're going to go to the arms, 90 degrees. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then you're going to go big circle, click at the top, click at the bottom. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Straight over the head. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. You're doing great. We're going to go back to the squat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Back to the arms. 90 degrees. Stop them at the end points. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you're going to do the big circle here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10. Great job, feeling a little burn up over the head. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last set, push it here. Squats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Arms. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Big circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Click at the top, click at the bottom. Ten. Good. Straight over the head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great job, you did it. Now I want you to relax, shake it out, and feel your fingertips. You'll feel a little tingling and a little puffy over the next 20 seconds there. That's the nitric oxide effect. You're dilating all those blood vessels, oxygenating everything from your brain to the kidneys to everything else in your body, and you're building muscle for the next couple hours. Repeat that three times a day. Total change in your metabolism, muscle capacity for strengthening and maintaining that lean muscle, changes the number of calories you burn sitting still. It's an exciting shift in our concept of exercise. Get after it, integrate it into your lifestyle, and enjoy the results. Take care. Athletico is at the forefront of innovation utilizing state-of-the-art equipment within our clinics, which is why we are excited to introduce blood flow restriction rehabilitation. One of the most problematic issues that occurs during rehabilitation is loss of muscle in an injured body part. Blood flow restriction technology is extremely effective at combating this issue by reducing the blood flow to the targeted extremity while low load exercises are performed. First, the extremity is measured by one of our trained clinicians for a perfect fit. Then, the bands are inflated to a pressure specific to your body's needs. After the bands have been properly fitted and inflated, Patients can utilize the Be Strong app to begin completing low load exercises. This will produce a profound muscle burn that is comparable to much more intense anaerobic training like lifting heavy weights. The fatigue that occurs will stimulate the muscle to enlarge, which will lead to an increase in muscle strength. Performing exercise while wearing these bands can benefit those who are recovering from ACL injuries, rotator cuff repairs, muscle strains, fractures, and more. Many patients can benefit from utilizing this specialty technique. We are excited to offer BFR as a service as we continue to focus on providing our patients the best, safest, and most effective treatment. Athletical Physical Therapy, better for everybody.